You're listening to Artistic Finance, show 163. Today's show is the broadcast of our live recording that took place at LDI in Las Vegas. We had a panel of lighting designers discussing their design tools and the software and what that costs. We talk about the essential software for entertainment lighting, the costs and considerations of that essential software, and what software we expect to be essential in the near future. I want to get to the discussion as soon as possible, but a couple quick things. There is a worksheet that accompanies this episode. It's a price list of all the software we discuss. It's a great resource for teachers to share with your students as they decide on their career and if they want to go freelance or seek a full-time position. If you're a working professional, this price sheet is useful as a reminder to charge market rate for your work because these overhead costs are part of your business. It's one page and it's printable. Download it from artisticfinance.com slash 163. That links you to Patreon, but you don't have to be a patron to access the document. That's just the hub for all the artistic finance resources. Now you may be thinking, Isn't LDI 2024 coming up in just a few months? And you are correct. This episode is actually from December's conference. The conversation is just as relevant and current today as it was when we recorded it. Thank you to our Patreon patrons. Your support made this live episode possible. Thank you to LDG, the Lighting Design Group, for sponsoring this episode and giving us the expertise of one of their lighting designers. And thank you to Ellen at Live Design for inviting us to have this live session at LDI. Recording live always comes with challenges, so our audio and video from the conference center got corrupted. So if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be no video after this intro. Thankfully, the panel all recorded backup audio on their phones. So if you noticed that audio quality, that's what happened. I'll return at the end of the recording to give some clarifications and updates. Without further ado, let's get to the show. You are listening to Artistic Finance, where we help creatives learn about the business of show business. Welcome, everybody, and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, leaving the show floor for a little bit uh, and being here. Um, We're recording this December 3rd, 2023, and we're coming to you live from Live Design International in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I am Ethan Steimel. I'm a lighting designer that was formerly based in New York, but recently based out of Phoenix. Uh, I host Artistic Finance, which is a weekly show, and I ask fellow entertainment professionals like these people here about how they handle finances and the business side of their career. Um, And we just passed 40,000 downloads all time, so super happy about that. And I wanna give a shout out to anybody who's listening outside the US because I don't give you guys enough love. So uh, thank you, thank you for listening. Um, But wherever you're listening to this from, whether you're here in Las Vegas or you're somewhere else on the globe, thank you for just taking this hour to sort of be here, be calm. Um, And before we start, I want to explain a little bit about artistic finance. Um, and it exists and it has sort of a two-part mission. Uh, and the first part is to provide a public uh, safe space for anybody that's in our industry that wants to ask any financial questions um, and get those questions answered without fear of shame or stigma or guilt, like we can talk about this. Um, and then the second part of our mission is also to give back financially to our entertainment colleagues. Um, and so we've been around for three and a half years and in that time, we've given more than $10,000 to freelancers and arts nonprofits. Um, and that's from our Patreon patrons. So patrons, people who have given to us, thank you for that. All right. So uh, now I am honored to be here sharing this stage with our accomplished panelists, um, all of whom are some of the kindest, uh, most energetic, and generous people I know. So thank you for being here. Um, for starters, we have... Ebony Madry, (laughs) I'm not going in the line because I have a list here. (laughs) So Ebony Madry, uh, who is an artistic finance favorite and a repeat guest, has been on several episodes. Uh, She's a lighting designer and project manager based in L.A., um, recently jumping to a new employer, uh, Wasted Potential. 
doing some amazing things. Um, at the end there, we have Carolyn Wong, a lighting designer based out of... New York. Yeah. New York? It says New York here, but for some reason I thought LA. Why do I think LA? No connection to LA. I'm originally from San Francisco, right, but so I live in New York. Editing. All right, so I'm really good at editing. I'm really good at editing. So we have Carolyn Wong, a lighting designer based out of New York City. Carolyn is the associate lighting designer for The Lion King Worldwide. And we have Danny Deutschman, who is the lighting supervisor at Arizona State University and also a lighting designer based in Phoenix. my new place, Phoenix. And also just for everybody, I recently started teaching at Arizona State University. So that's our connection here. And we have Ariel Benjamin, who's a lighting designer in New York City, working for the lighting design group, currently lighting the Tamron Hall show. And Roma Flowers was gonna be here, but had to leave LDI early. So return next year and Roma will hopefully be here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, before we start, just a disclaimer that we are not financial professionals. We are all entertainment professionals. So before making any decision, financial or otherwise, consult a professional. So the first topic that I would love to talk about um, is the software that we use to design or any of the design tools, specifically the software, because we have to pay for it. So I'm starting this with the premise that we all use software in our design process. And before we get into those specifics, I want to ask, like, what was the first time that you remember thinking, like, I need to learn this software? Like somebody said the name of it or something. So, so for me, it was 2010. I was an electrician at the Des Moines Metro Opera. I had just gotten out of college. <laughs> I had had a class or two where we went into the computer lab and touched Vectorworks. So I knew that it existed as a program. And then when I got to the opera, they said, okay, something, something light, right. Mm. And I was like, what's light, right. And they laughed at me, <laughs> which deservedly so, because I had just graduated with an emphasis in lighting design. Um, anyway, so I now know what light, right is last year, augmented, which I call augmented 3d. Um, I was looking for an assistant on a show and I couldn't be there for day of deck somebody reached out and said, hey, here you're looking for an assistant. I also can't be there, but in 10 minutes, I can put your plot. It looks pretty simple. I can put it into Augmented and we can pre-program and we'll be done. And I was like, oh, no, thank you because I need you on site. But also, what? <laughs> 10 minutes? Like, oh my gosh. So then I realized, okay, I think I need to be, because I pre-program, but I don't use Augmented. So that was an eye-opener. And then this year, I've decided VOR is the thing. I have benefited from a lot, but I have not actually used or downloaded because i also don't have a tablet that's my excuse so that's you have a phone that... you have a phone <laughs> i have a phone but i use it for phone things <laughs> um okay so those are my experiences so i'm wondering what was the first time or or a time you remember that you were like i need to learn this software so i'm gonna start with carolyn down there Ooh. okay well this is a pretty easy one for me the very first time that i walked into lion king they said, you need to learn FileMaker because that is the thing that we do all of our documentation on. And I was coming in as the bottom, the, the most junior lighting assistant, so that meant that I tracked the moving lights. And at that moment in time, there was no other software that tracked moving lights, so they had developed their own database, which I then had to learn. But as an extension of that, then they also did all of their work notes through FileMaker as well. And I use that now as a template for all of my work notes still to this day. So it's become like really a backbone of what I do. But now I have to say like the big trigger in my mind is yes, I also would like to pre as well. I think it's going to be essential. And I think I need to abandon paper and I need to get, I need to like join the digital universe and just go to a tablet. But as you can see, I still have a notebook in front of me. <laughs> okay. I, I go to design runs, and I'm the only one with a physical script. Like, all the other designers are using, oh, like, yeah. the tablet or something. Really for your script, too. Yeah, yeah. for everything. That, see, I, that I mark it, mark it up. Notes, they're doing everything. Yeah, I mark it. I mark it yeah. up with my cue notes. Yeah, because I remember Heather's, whenever that was off-Broadway, I think I shadowed a day in Jason Lyons, and he had his script on the tablet. And mm. I was, like, shocked. Floored. I, like, couldn't, because, like... He was a real designer doing a real show. Yeah. And <laughs> so I still haven't yet. I'm going to get there. I know. When I buy my magic tablet. Yeah. Also, that's amazing about FileMaker because I've only ever used it. I don't know the program well, but I've used it to track file spots. Exactly. Else. Powerful. Very powerful. But now there's like many standalone products where you can just like, you don't need to use the, the FileMaker if you don't want to. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Ebony, what about you? Mine really originated from needing to sell the show or get the show. I needed to make a pretty image. And so doing renderings, previs, I really use Capture a lot now 
mm-hmm. for that. Um, they have a free student version. Um, so I kind of started playing with that. And then Photoshop as well. Those were the ones where I was like, I need to get better at these programs so I can get more shows because I can show a producer a pretty rendering. I can show them, because I know that I can do it. I know that I have the skills to do it, but how do you get the show? So that, that's, those were the ones for me. Yeah, interesting. Okay, the Photoshop is something that I don't know super well. But I was thinking if I learned previs, I wouldn't need to learn yes, Photoshop. Correct. <laughs> and that's, that's, so I learned Photoshop first, right? Because the previs thing is very new, right? Like that's, I think especially when you start talking about theater, that's something that now a lot of theaters are getting more comfortable with, right? When you go in, spaces now have a dedicated computer for augmented attached to your console, right? But I learned Photoshop so that I could take a front elevation mm-hmm. and show some realistic beams of light, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Prior to being able to show like a fully animated cue sequence. Okay, all right. Uh, Danny, when was a moment where you were like, I need to learn software? Uh, definitely in undergrad. I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison and uh, we got a lot of hand-drafted plots and I remember just updating by hand, like um, before data exchange. So I think that's the thing that mm-hmm. I most remember and being excited about when I was an undergrad was not having to update the plot and then update the light right separately, but when they were finally were able to um, have data exchange and then you only update in one spot. That's a particular memory of mine. Hand drafting. You just said hand drafting. <laughs> I've oh, actually yeah. never... I got plots, hand, yeah, hand drafted plots that we had to, and then I'd have to update them as the assistant and I was... Yeah. Mm. Wow, okay. I've never actually seen a hand, like other than like Ken Billington Lighting Archive or whatever, mm. I have not actually seen You never hand drafted? I don't think... I, I, they, I had to in undergrad. They made me do it. Yeah. But like not ne- real. I never did a show oh, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, hand drafted. Show, I don't think I could have been a lighting designer if it was only hand... Like I would have been I over been like X. It would have been like X is 26 degree, circle is, or like that's what it would be. We, when I was in grad school, we had to do a hand drafted plot before to oh, yeah. present it Absolutely. first and then turn into vector works. Mm-hmm. And I think actually that's something that I find with people who have just exclusively CAD drafted, mm-hmm. the like basic fundamental understandings of like line weights mm-hmm. gets a little lost. Yeah. And I, f- I feel like that's still so. I, it, it's sad to me that like the younger generation doesn't still have to hand draft. Well, I think it's also part of like coming up that like got to hand draft a plot, but I think there's reasons for it too. Well, it's a little bit of yeah. artistry too. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, um, absolutely. So, so I don't want to sk- skip you, Ariel. Yeah, no. Is, is that right. your? Is that was that your moment no. of like no? When, when, well, I mean, when was your moment? I mean, obviously, definitely like- Vectorworks and Lightright, but um, specifically. So Ethan mentioned I work for the Light Design Group. We do bar- broadcast television studios, and one of the big things we do is a lot of installs that were, that do not have an on-site LD for them. So we are leaving the client mm. with a studio that they have to run themselves. And yeah. the way we do that is with the EOS Magic Sheets. Mm-hmm. Um, and that software, when that came out, I know, first of all, I just want to preface, I can't even bring up a channel on an MA, but I do know that they had Magic Sheets, I yes. believe, before. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, um, it was a very, but, um, ETC was like, oh, what yeah, is exactly, that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that, I would say that, and I've, we also, and we use the Magic Sheets very differently than I think they were originally designed to be used. We use them with macro buttons and mm-hmm. setting up basically kind of like a touch screen mm-hmm. app for the client. Um, and that's something that not only did we have to really dive into and learn, but learn how to use that software in a way that it wasn't necessarily designed to right. be used. I know it's weird to call them magic sheets because I still handwrite a magic sheet. But, and, all, but also, have, I have a digital one, though, also in my EOS file for every show. So it's like, how much work can I do? But it's well, do, you but, print, but anyway, do you print that one? Because you could, like, yeah, export you can that off one. Of the, oh, yeah. Nay, 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 nay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're already doing the, it twice. The one, the one on the EOS, well, it, it's, the one on the EOS is, like, has the macros and the stuff. So, so, like, to call it a magic sheet, it's like a glorified magic sheet. I guess it's just because like, that's still what the tab, when you bring up yeah, the tab, it's, it's a magic, magic sheet. sheet. So um, I think, yeah. But, but I sort of live off it a little bit. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't try to do double work. No, no. Okay, so then, uh, next question, and this is more of a lengthier question, so hopefully, um, I want to answer it, but I think I might skip, no, I'll do a really brief answer. Anyway, the question <laughs> is, what software do you do to use your, to, like, to do your work? So I'm just going to list the things that I use um, for almost every single design I do. I use Vectorworks for drafting for Magic Sheets. Uh, I use Lightrite for paperwork. Uh, Moving Light Assistant if I need to do documentation after the fact. EOS Offline to pre-queue. 
augmented i'm getting into the previs a little bit because i it's a oh, 2023 vectorworks makes it super easy uh the mobile rfr apps it was rarely used by me but i do use it barbazon and stagehand apps which have like dip switches and gels sometimes i'm using that light meter sometimes is a free app that's really not good but in a pinch it can be a light meter <laughs> dmx cat another thing i rarely use but i have it with me all the time but that's a troubleshooting app with a little hardware device of dmx um, and then i use excel word uh for spot tracking and cover pages google sheets for qlist google docs for notes canva for research presentations and then I have a Mac laptop, which is hardware, but like I want to be able to do all those other things if I didn't have that. So that's everything I use. So <laughs> if, if you can either say everything you use or what do you use that I'm not using um, and or what are, what are the ones you sort of rely on that you use every time? Because half of these I only use a little bit. Okay, so wait, I'm going to start with Ariel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously Vectorworks, um, and I think something that's kind of unique is that, um, again, comparatively to theater, and I came up doing theater, and I've been doing broadcast television now for almost 11 years. The first time I saw a broadcast television plot, and I was like, why aren't those lights on 18-inch centers? Mm-hmm. Why are lights all different angles? And we use vector... We, the plots that we draft are much more visually representational of how the light is actually truly hung in the space. Mm-hmm. And with that said, and it's funny because you brought up the vector sync, my gaffer, when I'm working on a project, they're doing the light right file, mm-hmm. I'm doing vector works, and we actually... I actually don't usually end up syncing mm-hmm. because the information that they're, they need... Like, I don't even have addresses on my plot. Like, for me, all I need to see is the channel number yeah. and what that channel... is, The purpose of that channel. Um, so because I'm not also sending off stuff to get pre-hung, like, we don't... The, the LD has to be in the space to hang a space normally... That kind of, we, I think that's a little different of how I'm using Vectorworks and Lightrite, where it's, yeah. it's very separate. Yeah. Um, and for me, like I, like, I haven't, I mean, I have Lightrite. I open it if someone <laughs> sends me a channel ah. hookup and I put it in a binder and forget about it kind of thing. So, right. yeah. Because I sync it, send it off. And then I'm very careful about if I'm going to resync it. Well, I think also because I work for a design firm, there's a lot of different people touching the paperwork. Yes. So that's where things get confusing. Yeah. Yes, and everything is on. So we use we we actually moved over from speaking of software, Dropbox to Ignite, which is a larger oh. file. It's a sharing archive that's also protected because it's our company and all that stuff. So many people touch those files, and as we all know, those yeah. XML files can be. As, <laughs> as, as wonderful as it can be, it can be so dangerous. Yeah. So How that's another referencing, reason. project sharing, yeah. all that stuff, it just kind of falls apart in how quickly yeah. everything I, I, starts of, to move. One of, things, one of the things I first do when I start a new file is I delete the XML file off my desktop. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just habit at this point. But So, yeah, that's a little different about how, how I'm using the, software re- that we all use. So. Okay. Do you put unit numbers on? You said channel and purpose. No, 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 because you know, we're not. They're all over the place. Yeah, we don't, and we. Yeah, it's not. Cool, you're so different. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll send you all. I'll send you all a, a, a breach of the studio plot I did, okay. and you're also going to be like, "This looks so messy." <laughs> okay. Amazing. Um, I'm just looking in your notes, and you had Luma. Oh yeah, so that's uh, you mentioned light meter. Yeah. So I have a, again, I never used a light meter before starting in broadcast television, um, and they're very expensive. Um, and I actually have a, I actually have it in my pocket right here, which is nice. They're the, <laughs> no, it does. Just walk around oh, yeah, with the light meter. Well, no, because I'm going on the floor later, so I got to, you know, it's, it plugs into your, your phone, um, and it's a color and lumens meter. It's also used for photography, but I believe their company actually might have kind of died, died oh, but they so they product. i know really yeah um, i mean it's about a third of the cost of a regular Siconic light meter but um their software is free and i actually find it to be pretty well done um okay. so you can still get them i think they just aren't making new ones so got it yeah okay okay all right jumping all the way down there carolyn Ooh. okay so in my role especially as an associate and replicating all of these shows worldwide the synchronicity, like I really depend on Lightrite and Vectorworks talking to each other, and I also really depend on sort of the accuracy of all the information that we're archiving. So f- because for us, it's about documenting it and then reproducing it over and over again. Um, so to that end, I'm always using FileMaker because of the database capabilities of it. Um, I actually take the EO show file and import that into my Q synopsis so that all of the timing and the parts are always consistent and I always have that at the ready to be able to hand to a stage manager or my lighting designer. 
Uh, we also do our follow spots exclusively through FileMaker. I, it makes it a little bit harder to share with other people, but let me tell you, those PDFs uh, really streamline everything for every follow spot operator. Back to the documentation, I love VOR. We've completely integrated that into our workflow, even on like just a very basic level of having a video document that has the queue number and like what it's doing at the same time. It's become like completely invaluable for again reproducing the show. And can I, sorry to interrupt. How did you in integrate that? Because like the show's been going on forever. I know. And, and so is it just like you took, you chose one of the shows to just put a video of? And we, we do it for every single show, but that way, because there's slight variations for the scenery and the staging for each show, and it just helps to have a picture representation that you can like, you can see one movie and you can see another movie and be like, what's different about these two? Like we are constantly in that position. And so whereas MLA is capturing s static images of each queue, it's helpful to sometimes see the transitions or see how the timing works out so you can see how everything kind of goes together. And are you using it like in tech, like to reference the last show, or is it yeah. operators that are using it? Oh, it's a little bit of all of the above, right? Because when you want to be like, why is this different than something else, like than the, the norm, yeah. we can reference like older versions of it. Be like, oh, how is this different than the... Um, the time that we did it in Singapore, or how is this different than the Hamburg show? Or, and you can sort of like tease out those differences more easily with the, the four capture. And so if people working on the show, they just have access to it. They have if, access if they to it. they need to go look at it. Exactly. Well, it is also like when you start putting in understudies and they're doing the timing slightly differently, or maybe they're standing three feet off, you can, you can see that more clearly with the four. So, and that's been really helpful for us also in the tech process. If you're trying to really dial in where a performer is standing on stage, you simply look at the video of the rehearsal last night and be like, ah, I can see that that light missed him by three feet. And then we can do that without having the performer in front of us, provided they're consistent, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So we use VOR all the time. Um, the MLA documentation is still really essential for the running crew that's left behind when they're swapping out moving lights. And I'm going to say it, we use Dropbox, like hard and heavy. It's just to put everything into one place and share those files. It's become absolutely essential. And the other one, which I think is, I don't know, the unsung hero for us is Microsoft Word and Excel. Like, guys, it's been around for ages. I hate paying for it, but... Um, it's kind of like the universal, like everybody has it. So I, I like the way that everybody can open up a, a doc file or an Excel file and be like, okay, yeah. navigate it. Way to bravely say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny, can we jump to you next? And actually, so Danny's lighting supervisor at Arizona State. So you get paperwork a lot. Yeah. So I feel like you use it differently because I send it off to you and right. then I don't sync it after that usually. <laughs> Um, so anyway, what, but what do you, what do you like repeating? Cause you also work with a bunch of different designers right? and I assume they might be sending you different stuff. So, uh, so I am the lighting supervisor and, uh, I am mentoring students through their process, um, as, uh, head electricians. So a lot of it is once the student designer has turned in their parts and we use Google drive for everything. We use Google everything. So and this in, is the thing because <laughs> I Dropbox here. You can sync uh, <laughs> Google Drive in Dropbox. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, you can. It's pretty sexy. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Mine. Yeah. oh no. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Um, okay, all right, we'll okay. table this one. <laughs> so obviously we're using Lightrite and Vectorworks. Uh, adding to the list of things, uh, I use Asana. It's a task-based app. Uh, it's great for electricians because you can have things that you need to do, and then within that you can assign them to people, you can have deadlines, um, you can uh, have PDFs to reference, you can follow when there's multiple people involved, or you want to just be able to, you know, you have an assistant electrician, and whoever's there and whatever's getting done, you can actually, like, check it off and see where you are in the process. So I like to have the students use Asana. I think there's maybe 14 seats for it being free, so I haven't really, in my particular realm, had a problem with the limit before uh, the oh, 14 yeah. seat limit because you know you can just rearrange who can see what got so it asana I, I oh asana. man a new software i have to learn great <laughs> great uh ebony how about you what's your list of software um <laughs> so it's interesting because i use obviously design software and project management software 
Obviously, vector works light, right? I've done it in an essence of being able to sync the two, but also in a very TV film base as well, right? Where they never touch each other because it's bad. <laughs> um, I also use uh, Monday uh, for project staffing and like scope of work details, um, uh, very similar to Asana. So if you just need to update people on a show and like kind of what's upcoming, mm -hmm. I use Monday for that. I also, um, with the company that I'm transitioning to, Wasted Potential, we use Discord. Yeah. So for all of our shows, they are listed and we have conceptual, a conceptual area and an, an active area. Mm. So shows are listed there. And as people get added to the team, because we're constantly staffing, who's the LD, who's the video designer, who's the video op, we dump them into that channel. And then that way, that's where we're updating design so they can see images, content gets uploaded there as it's finished so a creative can approve it. Um, I also use lightning tapes. It basically is like a hang card, oh. but it's to scale. Um, y'all should use it for hanging the shows. <laughs> yeah. I will. There's a better, um, maybe I don't. I, there's another version out there called Autoplot that is a little um, friendlier in its syncing process, but it literally allows you to take your plot, all in vector, it's all integrated into Vectorworks. You draw a line across your position, and as long as everything is um, positioned properly, you then print for, to scale a receipt using um, a receipt yes. printer, yeah, I've seen that. and you hang that on the truss. So it's yeah. great in, like, corporate settings where truss is moving, mm -hmm. gridded systems mm -hmm. where, um, or, like, rep plots. You can get it printed on fancier paper that doesn't rip. Wait, so you called that lightning? Lightning tapes. What was the one that you said was friendlier? Uh, Autoplot has one integrated in. Okay, so I'm getting mixed messages here. Which is your preference? They're, I, I like They're them same. both. <laughs> I just, you just pay a little bit more for lightning tapes. And then um, obviously capture uh, for rendering. Mm -hmm. I use Twin Motion to kind of lush up my renderings. I don't know what Twin Motion is. Um, Twin Motion is it is a drafting program, but it's really more architectural base. Mm -hmm. But it has figures that are animated, so you can have people walking through the space. Oh, cool. People look like they're like partying at a concert. We're all impressed. Yeah, I'm, that was I'm a collective all, awe. I'm yeah. all about, I'm telling you, everything for me is generally selling the show and getting the show. So, like, yeah. how do you impress a producer? How do you impress the artist so that they want to hire us to do their show? So it's, we know that we're capable, right? We're all capable in this room. Like, how do you get the show? So it's, for me, it's, it's capture and twin motion. Yeah. And then, yeah, a couple of others, but, um, like, I'm very digital, so notability on my iPad. Things like that. Oh, yeah, and you have Dropbox, Google Drive combined. Yeah, they wow. are combined because to me, they work. That sounds like syncing Lightrite and Vectorworks. But see, the, okay, I guess to iterate, though, in their combined nature, I'm using Dropbox to store information, but I like the way, like, Google Sheets mm -hmm. and Google Docs looks. I don't know. It's just more me appealing too. to me. And so I use it in that essence. Because you can sync your sheets and your docs to Dropbox. Got it. Okay. And you also, in your list, you had Zoom, which, of course, we should, I imagine we all use that now. Yeah. Can't not. Okay. All right. So, all these softwares sound great. I imagine I'll incorporate zero of the new ones into my life. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. I want to be good, a good professor. So, let's talk about how much they cost. For what you use, how much are you paying annually? Um, and I'm, I'm going to start here because I was a freelancer for 10 years and I'm still in that mentality. I haven't broken out of it yet. Um, like I haven't switched to the educational vector works because the watermark scares me. Um, scary. So, so I'm not, I'm not jumping ship yet, even though I technically can because I have an EDU address now. But anyway, so I'm currently my vector works is 570 every year. Um, and then I pay $99 for Word and Excel. And then I pay $109 for Dropbox. And so that's $778 a year. But I just want to say there's also some one-time cost software, sort of. Because, like, the computer, again, not software, but, like, I have to have it. Um, and then if you add in Lightrite, which was a one-time purchase, I imagine that'll go subscription at some point. DMX Cat was, like, I had to buy that. And then Nomad, I have a Nomad that I bought. So, anyway, all that over 10 years cost me $11,000. So, if I add that in, the real cost is $1,800 every year. So, even though it looks like $700, it's really more than that. So, that's me. 
Ebony, you just had, I'm going to bounce it back to you just because you're in my list. I'm, I'm like quickly adding it up because I was like, oh yeah, I didn't do that part. Um, I guess I'll just name everything. I'll just call it out and then somebody that's better at doing math quickly can do it. Um, Lightning Tapes is um, subscription based. It's a yearly subscription and that's like about $300. Wait, I have a question about that. So the, you have to buy the paper too? Yeah, that's, and that's another thing. So you have to buy the receipt printer. Mm -hmm. oh, and okay. then it, you also are buying the receipt paper, right? Okay. Um, but it's just like any receipt. It's paper just like any, re okay. any receipt printer, no. any receipt paper. Um, so there's that cost. I didn't think about that part. You're, that's good. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the lightning tapes is $300. Um, capture is like kind of a one-time uh, thing, depending on like if you want to upgrade. I just have the single universe uh, one, which is $400. Um, Twin Motion, Vectorworks, and Lightrite are all free for me right now um, because of the companies that I work for. Then I have Adobe, which uh, Adobe Suite, which is like 60 a month. Zoom, right? We hate paying for it, but we don't want to get kicked out of our 40 minute meetings. Um, and then Dropbox, which is about 20 a month. Okay. I gotcha. Um, also, you pay for the Zoom personally? You, you I do. I do because I don't use it with just one company, and I also use it personally. Yeah. So that was an expense where I was like, oh, it's under 20 bucks. Oh, That's okay. fine. Yeah. I, did, yeah, I was so happy Me too. To go, yeah, I was so happy to go to ASU and be like, I get a free one. I just <laughs> also didn't want it to always have their like little – because there, there's like the, the cover page, you know, like before you join a Zoom, and it says like which organization. I didn't want that. Oh. I'm a tacky kind of guy. So. <laughs> Ebony's like, I'm going to assert my independence here. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll take the higher, um, I'll take your free Vectorworks and light, right? I'll definitely take those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that was amazing. I didn't add those up, but it sounds like a fair amount. But also... 1700 1700 My manager says 1700 <laughs> Wow, okay. All right. So that's, yeah. Um, and then I want to take a note on Capture. Um, so I, okay, so at... Um, patreon.com slash artistic finance or if you get our like the artistic finance link where i have all the link tree um i have a document that we've all been working on together which is listing all of these softwares and their costs so it's a mm. pricing sheet um anyway but if you go to patreon.com slash artistic finance it's the first one up there now so i have we have all the softwares and their costs but i didn't add in capture and the reason is uh, episode 144 of this show <laughs> is all about previs and capture and some other ones um, and all the pricing. And that could be a whole other hour long conversation on paying for that. Um, so capture is the one that you won't see the pricing on, on that. Okay, Carolyn, jumping back to you. Oof. Okay, so I'm going to simply add on to the ones that have not been previously mentioned. So I use FileMaker. That is a one-time cost of $5.94 just to buy it outright, but they're constantly updating it. So you'll be buying an upgrade or purchasing the new version of it depending on how much time has elapsed between versions. That's kind of annoying. Like, like every three years? Yeah, I mean, I update it probably like every three years. And at a certain point, I was like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, it's time. we got to do it. In addition, there's MLA, so that's Moving Light Assistant. That is for a personal license, $770, which is not, not nothing. But again, that tends to be a one-time purchase. Yeah. Um, so you have to like amortize that over several years. To, hopefully that will also move to a subscription model so it gets updated more frequently. Also, so I will say the one time I downloaded Moving Light Assistant, I got the production to pay for it, um, which I'm very proud of myself for doing. <laughs> and for me, I work for Disney and we have an institutional li license amongst Lion King, but it's kind of like rotating. And I think if I were to ever leave Disney, I would, prob I would purchase that. It would, that's a keep if I need to document moving lights. In most of my smaller designs, I would say that moving light documentation is not as crucial, but we'll, we'll see. I have yeah. only ever done it for when I was working for designers and there on my stuff, I've never documented the moving lights. I, I feel like this is always like a push pull of like, who's responsible for documenting moving lights? Is it the moving lights programmer or is it the designer slash assistant? And, yeah. um, and like you mentioned earlier, the MLA requires the use of a camera. Granted, cell phone cameras are really amazing right now, and so you can get apps that will like feed your cell phone content into your computer, and you can capture that way. Um, but I do have a pretty nice camera that I 
purchased exclusively for documentation. Mm -hmm. So it's a black magic camera, which I got yes. off the Facebook marketplace. What? <laughs> For, what? For, for $200. Wow. Um, that was like a steal. Like when I saw it, I was like, I'm snatching that. But otherwise, you know, it's, it's a scam. It's What's like a, What's wrong with it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? I was really lucky. It was it was podcasters. They were giving it up for some reason. Oh, amazing. Those podcasters. I, I was like, ooh, ooh yoink. Um, but normally that's, you know, like a $1,000 camera plus a lens. So. Well, I mean, it makes sense. I So I haven't used MLA in a while. Uh, I've been referencing... Um, I, at the time I was using it, I didn't think you could use a cell phone. And now you can. So, yeah, it's even sexier now. It is. That's true. Um, and I have a British friend who turned me on to uh, an app called Camo, which allows you to use your phone as sort of like a remote camera. So you can take that feed from your phone, from your phone's camera, and send it to your computer. So that's what you have to do if you're going to use it for moving light assistant. Yeah. Got it. Is Camo free? Not free. $49. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Danny, what do you pay for software? I work at a university, so uh, <laughs> I, I have the benefit of most of the software that I have is either paid for by the department and or through the university. So um, I think the only one that I have specifically purchased for myself is RFR so that I can walk whatever theater I'm going into as a freelance designer. If, if they have you know the router set up, I can... Um, use my phone or even as an electrician that's right because rfr is a per phone i don't know for some yeah. reason i was thinking you could just log in with your credentials but no i mean i have it on my phone per device for every device yeah per device you have to buy it yeah i think yeah, mm, yeah i think if i left academia i would <laughs> be in trouble because i'd have to purchase a lot of things but because of that you know i have the benefit of the university behind me there's another piece of software i realized we use that uh, Slack. Oh, yeah, Slack. I mm. thought of that when we were talking about Discord. Mm. Yeah. We use Slack all the time. We use Slack with the students specifically, back and forth between us as well. Well, I know when I was at CNN, they used Slack. And uh, as a freelancer, yeah. I was like, hated it because they had one per studio. And so, like, oh, you're coming in for the day, check all the Slacks. And it's like, yeah, all seven of these studios yeah. reading the backlog. Absolutely. I'm not, not a big Slack <laughs> fan, honestly. And I think see, they use it, but it's not company, it's not really company wide yeah. thing for us. Yeah. Well, I deleted it and said that I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. They were like, we'll send you the link again. Yeah. And I was like, no, I don't know how it works. <laughs> and now I'm at ASU and, and I have to. And now you use it all the time. Yeah, it is sort of helpful, but horrible. Okay. Um, Ariel, you're next. I also have the benefit, similarly, of working for a design firm. So we do, you know, my vector works and like, right and all that stuff is paid for i mean it is interesting though because actually i thought that we used a like a business like multiple user license mm -hmm. but we actually have multiple licenses mm -hmm. because the designers are all out in the field um and you and namashek demands that, that it's all on a same server if you're using different users i think light a little bit more easy with that um but we have multiple licenses purchased for, and all the designers and people who need them have them. Um, wait, wait, so somebody just whispered that you can share Lightrite. Somebody whispered that. We don't know who said that. I didn't say it. I, did, I didn't know you could. For I the didn't. record, I did not say that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, you, it, you, no yeah. but you could because you can add, like, the thought, I believe, is that you can add your assistance and then you could remove assistance yeah. to a license. So it's one license. But you could add, pe I, I think it may be five people or something on a license. Like on my personal six, license? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yes, on your personal like, so Yeah, you so it's a not a secret. We don't have to whisper about no, it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I'm hearing another whisper um, about Vectorworks, because uh, a friend is whispering in my ears that somebody may pay for it and then share it with one other person and go offline and use it. Because you can put it on two computers using the mm -hmm. same. You yeah. could. I think okay. most of us have known that, yeah. though, for when we okay, were yeah, leaving yeah. education all in. It's like, hey, you want to you wanna split C's? Because I, I don't do this, but I maybe share mine with someone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will say, I think that Nemeshek still does have the student to pro yes. option, right? Which yeah. is brilliant. Which, yeah. And which is, which I took advantage, I mean, many, many years ago when I left grad school, um, I think it was a little different because I, I, I was looking it up because of this panel and they actually let you do an unlimited amount of mm -hmm. removed watermarks. There's only they 10 do. documents. Yeah. Back uh, when I did it. Can um, somebody talk about the watermark thing? Yes. Um, <laughs> Whenever. Because you're scared. I mean, I, I, think I have the opposite opinion. It doesn't yeah, bother well, me at all. The but watermark? then again, I've been in academia for 10 years, so I think I'm used to it. But, like, I don't, I don't, 
it, it doesn't hit the same for me. <laughs> I was told when I graduated that it was un, like that yeah. people would judge you in the professional world if you had an education, and also because then it messes up their files. True. That, honestly, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's the biggest issue. issue. But that, it sounds pretentious the, to me. <laughs> I, but it, that's, I mean, uh, yeah, but I think that's just part of, of being a professional, yeah, though, out of I the, agree. yeah. That, the, 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 I don't care if somebody has a PDF and it has watermark, but if we're going back and forth with yes, the file, yeah. it, it is the fact that it contaminates my file. And yes. there is like an older school where I have symbols that I created and made uh, myself, uh -huh. and I don't want those getting yes. contaminated, because that that's has happened true. to me, and then I had to go back to the source file and redo mm -hmm. it all. Yeah. Um, so that's for me. The pretension thing, it, having worked in the professional world for 10 years, I have seen lots of watermarks, and I don't think it phases a single person seeing a watermark. It's just you don't want to get that watermark stuck on your mm -hmm. thing because, and can somebody talk about this, about the getting it unwatermarked? Yes. So I was going to say, so I, my, my biggest pro tip that I can offer is that if for anyone going student to pro, make a mass, and this is also now that you can you can do as many as you want, but make a master fixture libra library um, document mm -hmm. and so it removes every the watermark from every single fixture and you can use that always to pull from and know yeah. that you're if you've made like custom fixtures because now the yeah. vectorworks library yeah. like back in the day mm -hmm. you would have to search for the fixtures right, right? Yes. on the manufacturing yeah. site mm -hmm. but now their library the vectorworks library is great yeah I Unless think, you've made fixtures. And, I, and I, yeah, I think it's just for fear always of knowing that, that definitely that library file is definitely unwatermarked mm -hmm. and you don't by accident. Because as we all know, once you watermark, you can't, can't go back. So, <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. I, yeah, and I think it's, I don't know what. But I reached out to Vectorworks recently yeah. about unwatermarking something because I was working on a magic sheet for someone else, for a designer uh -huh. I was working with, and somebody had watermarked it and it was. You know, there was so much information on the magic sheet that the watermark was like making it hard to read. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I got to get this on watermark. So I yeah. emailed Vectorworks and I said, hey, can I do this? And they go, well, you get one shot to unwatermark. And they're like, we'll do as many files as you want, yeah. but you only get one shot. Yes, I was like, that's true. Oh. I was like, this is not my show. I'm not wasting my one <laughs> shot. It is the one this. shot. In that essence, um, I don't know. I think this may be frowned upon. So forgive me, Vectorworks, because I do <laughs> love you. Um, you could make your page border larger. I do that too. And okay. so unlock it. I do that. I know people say that the watermark doesn't bother them and all that. It bothers me. So it bothers I, me. I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. It bothers me as well, yeah. But it, but it takes five extra minutes. It does take five extra minutes. Super annoying. It does. And you do need like Adobe Acrobat. Um, I was about to say, we used to do that too, where we turn it into yeah. a file, go into Illustrator, and yeah. just do a little just white re block. No, or just oh. remove, because you you, it would turn every oh. line in the letter oh. into a, a removable line. Oh. But again, this was back when I was in grad school. So, But, but I, now you can, you can pay to, <laughs> you can PDF them, and then there are apps that you pay for that will unlock them, and then you can. If you upload to Canva.com, sometimes it will... Unlocks yeah. PDFs and yeah. stuff. I know you're shaking Carolyn, your head. Carolyn, what, what are you I thinking agree with over you. there? I, I'm with you though. I Listen, I, I just I'm just one of those people who keeps on. I open old documents to create new documents, and I just cannot have the stink mm. of an educational yes. watermark yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So, no, no, I, I'm the same way. But no, I'm, same. I'm just yeah. saying, like sometimes I get it from the set designer, right. and it's like, okay, do I want to export this to DWG and then back in so that I can have the lines. Like, do I want to do that, or do I just want to use the PDF in the file? Yeah, and, and like I've sent things to Vectorworks and been like, I have a professional license. This file has come to me. I yes. need it unwatermarked, yeah. and they've never said so, to okay. me. So, so somebody told me that they said, "Oh, I just email files all the time to Vectorworks." So I said, "I'll do the same," yeah. and then they responded with like one time. Oh. And I don't. I'm not a good sweet talker, so I was oh, like, yeah. "Okay, goodbye." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if I had a friend at Vectorworks, which I should go make a friend at Vectorworks. Yeah. But no, I do agree. I think in general, though, it is like challenging now that we are all working professionals when you receive something that's watermarked outside of an educational institution. If I'm working with a university oh, yeah. and I'm working with students, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. But outside of that, working as like an industry professional, it's really challenging when you get that type of documentation because it does take extra time away from you to email somebody to get something back mm -hmm. is just a whole nother step. Yeah, here, here. I, I understand also what you're saying about like the kind of pretentiousness of it. Yeah. But I think Vector, as we can all agree, Vectorworks is a staple software to Absolutely. be a professional light designer. Mm -hmm. And that is, as we're talking about this panel, like that is an assumed cost that you are going to have to pay in order to be a professional light designer. The, the nice thing now though is that, you know, back in the day, it was one lump sum, right? 
Now it's subscription based. You can literally pay like a, a little over a hundred bucks a month. And so if you know you're working consistently, okay, I'm going to pay for this for two months and then I'm going to have to cancel it and then sign back up. That's something that now is available for mm -hmm. younger folks coming out into yeah. the industry. Yeah. And I have a fear, a phobia of subscriptions. Yes. Um, so I was worried about that. But there are times in my life where like I don't use Vectorworks for a couple months and sometimes even longer, like just because like of the show, I might have drafted it a long time ago and then I'm going to be on it. So I feel like it could benefit me. But since I'm in my yearly subscription right, right now, I don't right. know if they're going to kick me out of that eventually, but I'm, I'm happy with it. So I'm mm. hoping it's just until I die, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I can pay them five hundred seventy dollars every year until I die. I know, but they're also going to—it's going to raise substantially next year, is what I heard. I mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think that five seventy-five is going to go up to like seven seventy-five, and yeah. that number is a little harder to. to well, swallow. and at that point, it's almost—it's closer getting now similarly to when we had to buy it mm -hmm. annually. annually. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm, how was the service select? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah, if you have to have a subscription, because you used to be able to buy it, and if you wanted, you could just wait three years and then update again. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people still do, or try to do. But okay. I got an announcement, like, people that I work with are like, we're all doing 2024 right now, as of, like, and I was like, as of December 1, I was like, you guys, Ew. no. Yeah, you're like, can we at least finish the year? Because then we have the holiday season to get it on to our computers. Mm -hmm. And to work all the bugs out? Yes. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have one more question. We have 14 minutes to go. I guess which one of these are completely free? Because we've sort of talked about pricing. But which ones are have a free version that is usable? Has everything we talked about, we have to pay for a version. Canva? Oh. Canva is a uh, simple version of it is free. Yeah, I use free Canva. I mean, um, the, the EOS family offline editor is free, yeah. which I yes. use a lot. Oh, for sure. And also, lot, Ebony, you're all over Capture, yeah. um, but I'm now getting into Augmented, um, which is free. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm, for me, it's good enough for now. Yeah. Um, I, the reason I like Capture, because I'm, I'm mostly working on MA, so I could use MA3D, which is free, but it doesn't capture renders, I feel, video and lighting more realistically, like closer to reality. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have like free versions, but they have a student version. It doesn't allow you to open non-student versions. And it has a, a free demo, but it times out after 90 minutes. So those, that, that's free <laughs> as it gets. But if you're doing all of your work in Vectorworks and then just importing the capture for a quick rendering, it's perfect. Because you could do it in 90 minutes. I feel like one rendering, I mean, like, you're just turning on the lights, angling them really quick. That's like 40 minutes. I know. But how long do you, how long do you need in order to learn the program? 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so th that's where I think learning it, honestly, though, I feel like if I were to put Capture in front of any of you because you know Vectorworks, it's so intuitive. Like, the first time I was very intimidated and I opened it and I was like, Oh, that, that's, it, it's Piece like, cake, huh? it's so, mm -hmm. literally, they have one minute videos, like tutorials, because that's how simple uh -huh. the program is. So we have no excuse, is what I'm hearing. No, 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 I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, because, because we've all spent so much time in a software that is made specifically for drafting, when you open it, I feel like 90 minutes is pretty adequate, if you are just doing a quick rendering. Also, Carolyn, FileMaker. So I have somehow, so I had an illegal version of FileMaker. When, <laughs> when, so many of us have. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's still on one of my computers. But I only used it when I was tracking file spots and uh, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I have, I have gotten by without, and I've assisted on several shows, but somehow I have gotten away without buying FileMaker. Good on ya. Good on me, but also, like, I feel like maybe, uh, anyway. But I'm, I'm just saying it. Yeah, it's, so that's the thing. It's, it's, but, but, if you're working with a file that is fairly old, you can continue to work in that version of FileMaker like indefinitely. It's, it's just when somebody comes along and's like, "Hi, I have the new latest like version 19," and you're like, "Oof, guess you what?" I was going to ask what it? what version FileMaker is up to. I think it's 19. Don't quote me on that. I think but I have 12. I have 12. I think the last, when I was still doing that, I had 12.5. That was the last one I had. I'm up to 17 at this point, but I think the latest version is 19. So that shows you how long or how frequently I update. 
Because it's the same thing with Capture. Like, I don't feel like... You don't have to... Getting file... Like, I feel like I should know FileMaker, but then I'm like, I just don't want to buy it and... And make that investment. So but then, like, it's a whole thing that I have to learn and I... Can I tell you the ironic part of all of this is I feel like what happened was we insisted that some local production have it on their computers to reference it or they wanted to alter their... F- Follow, follow spot sheets. So we're like, okay, you need to buy it. Guess what? You can't buy the old version. They had to buy the new version. And that meant that all of us had to. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty much. So that just kind of bit us in the tuck us. <laughs> yeah, FileMaker. I don't know. Hopefully it's not in my life. I don't know. We'll see. If we'll you see. don't need it, then don't. If I don't need it, I don't need it. Yeah. I just, sometimes, sometimes I feel inferior. Like I see so many people using it. So I actually well. found that to be one of the most intimidating softwares to learn. And again, I haven't used it in years and years and years, but it was it was very intimidating to, especially being told like you have like you have to do this, learn this right now. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I was grateful that I could learn from somebody else's template, and so that's insane, yeah. and, and so that's been really helpful. And I will confess, I use it in the most basic format. Like, there's a lot that of makes professionals. Me feel better. Thank you. There's a lot of professionals <laughs> out there that have created other tables, and they reference this and they reference that. I don't do that. I use it in a very basic sense. But it gets me like the results that I need, and it's really cl- clean and integrated. Mm-hmm. Amazing. All right, so I'm going to start to wrap up. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything to add? Any softwares that we haven't mentioned that you love? Yeah. Everyone uses VectorWorks. Do any of you users, any of your students, use Drafty? You know. I thought drafty whatever was going to become a thing, maybe. Was going to change the industry? So far, I've not seen a single, I don't know anybody. I just comment, I'm a student at the University of Utah, and the big emphasis is on VectorWorks. Like, strictly VectorWorks have not really touched any other programs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just realized you're not on a microphone, so I should be repeating these things. (laughs) The question was about drafty. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anybody uses anything other than Vectorworks for drafting. I wish it would have taken um, off the way it said it would. Subscription, low. Yeah. Oh, a low subscription. Okay, so a much less costly version. Um, and the consensus is that nobody uses it so far, even though there was, we thought maybe there we would hoped. be. We and hoped. And then you were at University of Utah? Mm-hmm. Um, and at, there they're using Vectorworks and emphasizing Vectorworks. So. And well, same thing uh, for Arizona State. Um, we use AutoCAD. The set people use AutoCAD. Yeah. I was going to say, our, our, yeah, our, our uh, systems installation department uses AutoCAD because that's in line with architectural draftings. Um, but, yeah, we all the designers are strictly Vectorworks. Yeah. And, and also, I will say, um, last summer I did three shows, and two of the set designers used Vectorworks, actually. Oh. So I've started seeing set design. I don't know if that's a mm-hmm. thing. But I've found a lot of scenic yeah. designers using Vectorworks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a by school basis. Yeah, it's yeah. a very yeah. I think it is like, where did you come from? <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Who did you learn from? So What's your pedigree? Nice yeah. So. This is a question for me, just random thing. Is Mac versus PC a thing at all? I I, I feel like this is a little bit like tilts its hat back to the the Vectorworks question. Like I was at a crossroads in my life where I was like, should I go Mac or should I go PC? And somebody was like, you should buy the computer that everybody, all your colleagues have just for ease ease of of use and communication. And that is how I got pressured into Mm. getting a Mac. I haven't looked back. (laughs) I think I'm the person that sometimes has to carry two Mm. laptops, Mm. a PC and a Mac because MA Mm -hmm. two is PC driven. So if I need to do any offline work without a console, it's there's no Mac based version of MA2. That's what, that's what I was curious. Like, do you have to? Because I I survive on a Mac. But I'm 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 an Apple girly. Like I'm an Apple girly all the way. Like I open a PC and it it really makes me panic. I just don't like the way it looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, instantly. Because I I don't know. Um, there's a program called Pharos that people use, and then um, what's the architecture one that Revit. 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 Yeah. Because we did, we have this center in, in uh, Phoenix called the Mix Art Center. It's like this new state of the art, blah, blah, blah. We went there for some lighting training, and the trainers, like, ranted. I don't know why, but for, like, 10 minutes, um, was like, don't use Mac. We need PC for all this. And, I, like, you can't be a lighting designer if you but use Mac. But a, a lot of the programs, so like, architecturally, a lot of those programs are PC-based mm-hmm. um, as well. So, okay. I mean, I will say all my, like, on the technician side, I find, like, ga- my gaffers and stuff are more PC-leaning, and I think that's just power-wise, and I think also when they're trying, they're also remotely running 
a console off the you know off the ETC dongle. It's like it they I've found that they yeah. prefer that, but I am I'm yeah, also okay. an Apple person. Yeah, because I found that everything I need can go on the Mac or the PC. Doesn't matter. Um, so just personal preference. Okay, one last question. I just really want to quickly throw in here. Um, what is nobody knows this is coming? What's the next project that you're working on? Just for fun, and we'll just start there and work the way this way. Ooh, okay. Well, the Lion King U.S. tour is about to do a like wholesale upgrade of all of their moving lights, and they're removing all of their scrollers from the rigs. So we are going to move to an almost like completely LED environment there. So nice. That's really exciting. We Which, just saw it at the Pantages in L.A. a couple months back, and I know it's coming to Sagerstrom. Sagerstrom. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see it there. Uh, that's dope. That's super dope. Um, I don't know that I can say any of my upcoming stuff. I'm very blessed to be working with uh, a lot of tours that are are going out of the door with a lot of phenomenal artists. So Can you um, say any? Because I know you text me some videos and stuff, and it is amazing. Yeah, I can talk, talk about stuff I've just done. Yeah. Um, I just sent out uh, the Rod Wave tour, which is wrapping up. Um, and I just had the pleasure of working with uh, Michael Blublet on a fundraiser event. These are amazing things. Here. It's, I'm impressed. Um, Danny, what's next for you? I just closed uh, a musical, Miss You Like Hell, and then as for our theater department, um, we are doing a production of Clue. That's the next thing on the list for us. Yeah, um, very exciting for our theater department <laughs> to be doing Clue. <laughs> it's going to be big, and then um, we're also doing Detroit 67 later in the semester. Awesome, awesome. Ariel? I also can't a lot of times talk about upcoming stuff. Um, I did just launch uh, brand new studios for Yahoo Finance okay. um, that just launched about two weeks ago. Um, and I believe I'm going to some presidential debate in New Hampshire, I think, <laughs> uh, in, in January. But um, And then ongoing, I have, my, as you mentioned, the Tamron Hall show on ABC. We're in our fifth season right now. So um, hopefully we keep, keep getting renewed. <laughs> okay, real question from me. Yahoo Finance Studios. Correct. How, how do they compare to the artistic finance studio? <laughs> I mean, uh, not as well lit, but I, not you as know, well lit. yeah, yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, <laughs> I'll hire you. I'll call you. Okay, Thank amazing. You. Okay, all right. So that's the time we have. Um, Thank you, amazing panel, for being here. You guys are awesome. Um, it, everybody, if you enjoyed this panel, um, you can hear some of these people on previous episodes of the podcast, and you will hear the rest of the panel on future episodes of the podcast. You just don't know it, but they have all, by being here, agreed to be on future episodes. So uh, if you're really hip and into technology and or podcast, um, like and subscribe, Artistic Finance. And if you're listening and you need a production of The Lion King Lit, call Carolyn over there. <laughs> no, <just laughs> um, If you're needing like a huge concert or event or tour designed, taken care of, call Ebony there. If you need a television studio designed or refreshed, call Ariel. And if you need something supervised in the Phoenix area or designed, call Danny or myself, and we'll fight over what it's going to Oh, and if you need Broadway, I'm open for that. That's so kind of you. I like say that in every single episode of the show, and uh, manifesting or something. It yes. hasn't, hasn't worked out, but yeah. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Um, okay, so everybody, yeah, thank you for sharing your time, your energy, um, your experiences. This was really great. Um, and I've been ending all the episodes since, um, uh, for the last eight months, I had a baby eight months ago, my wife did. And, um, so now I end all the episodes with a dad joke. So I'm going to try, I feel like this is a pretty good one. I'm going to, hopefully I say it right. right, It's a little bit of a journey here. So, (laughs) all right. So I went to a Catholic high school, uh, Duchenne, St. Charles, Missouri. That's where I'm from. Um, and my drama teacher was named Sister Sharon Morgan, right? So. I was down on the show before. I went to the Circle Bar. And who was there? Sister Sharon Morgan. And not only at the bar, but was a bartender, is a bartender there. Right? Shocking. I swear, guys, this is the biggest surprise I have ever seen, bar none. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) All right, that's it for today. Until we do this again, break a leg, everybody. Thank you. That was the live episode. My takeaways were, as designers from theater to TV to events, we are doing the same thing. We're taking light and focusing it onto things. 
In that process, we're all using different tools, but also using a lot of the same tools. And if you know the programs, those are transferable skills across industries. Now, FileMaker, don't be afraid of it like I am, because several productions use it. If you find yourself tracking follow spots on it, try to dig down and make sure you understand the program more than just the basics. Luma Light Meter mentioned by Ariel uh, that it might be dead. It's still a company and it still sells pocket size light meters. They range from 299 euros to 500 euros. Lightning Tape and Auto Plot for laying out lighting instruments based on your Vectorworks plot. That's super useful for electricians or for LDs that are very on top of it. And since this recording, I've actually seen these recommended on the Lighting Designers Facebook group, uh, and a lot of people are using these. Discord wasn't something I was expecting to hear about being used. I don't actually have an account for that, but we'll see if it makes its way into my life. Asana and Monday, those are project management softwares. They're useful if you have various people working on one project and everybody needs to access the same things or mark tasks as complete. Now, I haven't used them, but I did use one called Trello for a hot second when I was trying to systematize creating an artistic finance episode. I found it very easy and intuitive, and it also is free. Twin Motion was mentioned by Ebony. Uh, it's a separate program and it integrates into Vectorworks. Now it's free for students, educational institutions, and anybody making less than a million dollars a year in revenue. Zoom is one that I recently purchased for myself. It's $200 for the year. Since this recording, I ended up not renewing my teaching contract and I'm back to freelancing. I'm also conducting a lot of new artistic finance interviews, and I found it way more useful to have my own seat than borrow Nicole's, which I had been doing. Capture Previs, I did add that to the price sheet because it seems like enough people are using it. Ebony mentioned there's a student version, and it's actually a demo version that's accessible to anybody. The only thing is that you can't save your file and it times out after 90 minutes. Lightrite has a similar demo version for anyone. You just can't save the file. The price for capture is for the program itself and it's paid by universe. So one universe starts at roughly 400 euros and to update it year to year is roughly a hundred euros, no matter how many universes you have. But that price is the same to upgrade, whether you're going from 2023 to 2024 or if you're going from 2019 to 2024. So if you forget to upgrade one year or two, it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg to get the new version. Vision, which is Vectorworks visualizer that I have yet to meet anybody that uses it. I have discovered that in 2024, four universes of Vision are included in Vectorworks if you have the Spotlight subscription including service select, which is what I am enrolled in, which is a year after year renewal. I've been playing around with capture and it's a pretty good program. So I'm not planning to learn vision, but just so you know, it is included. If you have the spotlight Vectorworks. those are my takeaways. I always love the live episodes because not only do I get to see the panelists, but I get to see listeners. There's only 200 of you out there. And so meeting you in person always blows my mind because I'm thinking 8 billion people on the planet, 200 listen to this show. How is it that I actually get to run into the 200 of the 8 billion? And yes, I know that we're at a conference of lighting people, so it makes sense, but still blows my mind. All right, mark your calendar for December 8th through 10th. That's when LDI is this year in Las Vegas as usual. We don't have official plans to be there, but hopefully we're gonna get organized for a live recording and that would be Sunday, December 8th. So mark your calendars, plan your trip, and I look forward to seeing you there. That's it for today. Until next time, break a leg. Thank you for listening to Artistic Finance, where we interview successful artists, leaders, and investors to help educate and inspire the creative community. To access our show notes and resources, go to artisticfinance.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any decision, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Artistic Finance.
Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting. 